Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Gallery here in New York City. Bassist and educator and composer Desron Douglas has been one of the pivotal bassists within the last decade, playing with the likes of Cyrus Chestnut to Robbie Coltrane, also backing the likes of Reinhard Harper, Eric Reed, Kenny Garrett, and Farrell Sanders. Tonight here at the Jazz Gallery, he is performing with his quartet, the Black Lion Quartet, featuring Kush Arbery, David Bryant, and Lumi Spann. about how this amalgamation started. I mean, because you, you're doing two groups. You've got the New Jazz Workshop, and this is a little different. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the Black Lion Quartet basically started as a, a, a group where I can uh, keep the music open and, 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 and showcase my, my affinity for the small room and the big room. Um, uh, originally, the idea was to have bass, vibraphone, trumpet, and drums to give the bass more of a responsibility of harmony and rhythm. Um, but, and actually, we debuted here at the gallery in, in 2011. Um, and it was, it, was, it was a blast. I think the band was Curtis Torian on drums, Dwayne Eubanks on trumpet, and Brian Carrot on vibraphone. 
Uh, two years later, or oh, a few years later, I'm here with David Bryan on piano because I feel like I'm going to play the way I play no matter what, whether there's a piano player or a vibraphone, I'm going to try to do my thing. And David's one of my favorite pianists. He's, you know, he's one of the baddest cats on the scene right now. And uh, Kush Abaday on drums, he's one of the baddest cats, like he's, if not the baddest cat, young young drummer on the scene right now. And Lummy Span, me and Lummy, Lummy was was a, a, one of Jackie Mack's last protégés, and and we've known each other since we were in middle school. We've been friends ever since. We're like brothers, so and we all think think alike. You know, whatever we're doing, we. We like to bring it everywhere, try to get all the possibilities out of the music. That's the whole idea of the Black Lion Quartet, keeping it open. In recording this project, what were some of the musical ideas that you wanted to convey to your music fans, but also express as a musician? Well, uh, where I come from, you know, uh, I was raised in Hartford, Connecticut on uh, curry goat and, and rice and peas and, and, and uh, uh, I grew up in an apostolic church and, and you know traditional West Indian upbringing my family's very close and, and, and this music jazz has been my uncle was a, a great jazz drummer and composer so when when we decided, I think you're talking about New Jazz Workshop. So New Jazz Workshop, that band started in college. Me and Lummy and David and uh, Josh Evans on trumpet and um, uh, Curtis Torian. You know, we started that band in college and we all bring our own flavors. We all write. So that band is, was pretty much put together to bring about everybody's influences and, 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 and you know, all at the same time, you know. We're all about the same age, and we all grew up listening to hip hop, funk, R and B, soul, gospel, classical music, jazz. So we feel like we can give all of that at the same time, you know. But within the context of the swing, you know, and in this band particularly, uh, I think we all have the same mantra that you know, we never, we never sacrifice the swing, but we take it as far as we can take it. You know, I'm hearing a lot in this band. I'm hearing the three sounds. I'm hearing some Cannonball Adderley, and I'm hearing a little Jackie McLean. There's a little soul. There's a little straight ahead post bop going on here. It's just this organically works for you. Thank you, thank you. I, I think that was the whole idea. I mean, I try to convey that whenever I get behind the bass on the bandstand. You know, when I work with Cyrus, I mean. You know, working with Cyrus Chestnut for many years, I mean, he's got gospel, blues, soul, classical, you know, R&B, bebop, you know, uh, 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 hard bop, all wrapped in one. And he he makes it a point to showcase that when he's playing every tune, no matter what the tune is, and 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 being around different band leaders just like him, you know. Uh, so. The, the band itself is is conveying the message, you know, from the from the leader's point of view. <laughs> you dig, you dig. How does it feel playing with Robbie Coltrane and a uh, Pharaoh Sanders or Cyrus Chestnut? Now you leading your bands. This has got to be a, a a great thing for you. Well, uh, um, you know, I once learned uh, a great leader is a even better follower and uh, uh, I can remember early on my freshman year in college Jackie Mac Jackie McLean calling my house and, and when I was in the program and, and and telling me you know you know I see you leading the band and he would tell me you know why don't you stand in front of the band with the bass you know he said you know Mingus used to do that you know you can still do your role but why don't you stand in front of the band I was always nervous about that, you know, because I just wanted to play some bass. You know, I wrote some music, some tunes and whatnot. I just wanted to play the bass. So, uh, but, you know, from a leader point of view, you know, I, I like the chance to get to play my tunes, you know. Um, I, I, I love music, and I love to, to express myself through music. And Cyrus 
there's, there's not many band leaders. Cyrus, Ravi, uh, working with Abraham Burton, Eric McPherson, Steve Davis. Out of all the band leaders that I've worked with, there are only maybe uh, uh, maybe 25 percent of them will play some of my music. You know, and I appreciate that big time. And some, a lot of them have recorded it and got some of my stuff out there. So I like to, you know, I, it feels good to to be playing some of my tunes. But at the same time, I'm playing David's music, and I play a lot of a new jazz workshop. We play Lummy's music, you know, uh, and, and Kush was playing the piano earlier. So I like to vibe off of my friends, and you know, they're my influences as well. You know, so just playing original music, you know, original music that that. Playing original music with like-minded people. It feels good. It feels great. Des Hartford, Connecticut is your home, and music has always been pretty much in your psyche ever since you entered this earth. Tell me how your father and your uncle played a very, very pivotal role in you as a musician. Well, my dad was a is a, a gospel musician, guitarist from Hartford, Connecticut, and a vocalist. And he was the first person to put the the bass in my hand. You know, when I was nine years old, first he tried to teach me how. To, Play guitar, but the guitar was not, I popped a lot of the strings. I had a little synth guitar, and I popped a lot of the strings on that. So he just said, you know, he saw me gravitating toward the bass, and uh, he put the bass in my hand. And he gave me my first my first inklings of music, first lessons, and 
and, and education and music was from my pops in the church playing gospel music. And uh, I discovered who my uncle was, my, my great uncle, around the age of 13. And after researching and who he was and, and, this, and this music, I caught the bug, man. And, and I've, been, I've been dedicated to jazz ever since. But I still play in church. I still play gospel. still play with my dad and my brothers. Uh, we had, a, we, had a, we had a gospel quartet. My dad formed a group with him and, and my brothers, and, and we played and sang, and we just did a concert a few months ago in uh, Hartford. So, you know, I, I keep it real, you know. That's, that's where I learned this music, and that's where, I'm, that's where I'll, I'll play my last notes in church, you know. Your uncle was the great Walter Bolden, and he recorded with Stan Getz and Horace Silver, quite a few people. <laughs> Him and Horace got their big breaks together. My uncle was the one that told Horace to move to Hartford. You know, he had a gig. Him and Joey Calloway, bassist, had a gig at a club called the Sundown Club in Hartford. And it was a popular spot where all the luminaries of the time in, in the 50s and the 60s, they would come through, you know, because Hartford was considered like the black hole. It's two hours from Boston and two hours from New York. So you have to go through it to get to both cities, basically. And, and that's what they did. And when they would come to town, they would call my uncle's trio. You know, they worked there six nights a week. So uh, my uncle had met Horace at some point. And he, he, they were both around the same age. And he convinced Horace to move to Hartford. And I, mean, I got this gig. And one night, you know, they'd been working there for a few months. And uh, Stan Getz came in, played with the band, and called him the next day and said, I want to bring you out to New York. And they recorded the Roost Quartets, you know. And that was the beginning of uh, the beginning of what was a great, great career in the music for my uncle. I mean, he, you know, he wrote a lot of music, played with a lot of people, toured all over the world. And he was very much loved on the scene, you know. And and uh, I hear stories about him just about every other week. Musicians that that, that talk about my uncle Walt, you know. And uh, he's really pivotal in getting me involved into this music. You know? So I'm trying to take it as far as, as he took it. Yes, please. And 
so here it is, you know, five, six years later. A couple records under the belt, you know. And it's, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to be able to work with this one. Cyrus, you know what scene tonight with his new band and his ensemble. What do you think he's learned from you and he's passed it down to the musicians in his ensemble? I don't know about learning from me, but... <laughs> You know, he plays beautiful music. Plays music that uh, stimulates the soul, stimulates the intellect. And, you know, he definitely, always, myself, I always try to make people uh, leave a performance feeling better than when they arrive. And I can truly say for myself, I feel much better leaving than when I arrive. And so, you know, it's just, he has such a joy of playing music, and you know, that's just the one thing, and it's like just the, that's the thing that I was given. Like you, you know, whatever you do, you make sure that you play it to the best of your ability and have great fun while doing it. Who are some of your, your musical influences, both on the bass, but also, it doesn't have to be music also. Oh, well. Musical influence, of course, Dr. Jackie McLean, um, Ray Brown, um, Muhammad Ali, um, Rosa Parks, um, Abraham Lincoln. He's a very controversial and, and important person. Um, Doug Williams, you know, uh, Phil Simms, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Giants fan, so, you know, Phil Simms, you know, uh, uh, anyone that was creating or, or, or anyone striving to be perfect amongst chaos, because just the idea of that alone you know, going against the grain. It's, it's challenging. You know, when you go against the grain, you got to be, there's no room for error, right? So it makes for an interesting situation, you know. Um, but those are pretty much my influence, man. You know, um, my mom, my dad, you know, my grandparents, you know, for raising me. My city, growing up, growing up in a in a time when you know is a big deal just to graduate high school. You know that's an influence on me. You know, uh, I grew up around uh, Hartford. It's very rich in culture, but there's a dark side to the city as well. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of poverty. You know, so I grew up, I saw a lot, I saw a lot as a kid, and, and I made it, and I can tell other kids, you know, living in the inner city, you know, find something you love and do it, man. That's an influence, use that as an influence, you know. It's not about where you live, it's about who you are. That'll do it again for another dish of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Gallery here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank the members of Desron Douglas's Black Lion Quartet, as well as Mr. Desron Douglas for his time. Also, the talented Cyrus Chestnut for his wonderful comments. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time. Peace.